Alrighty. <clears throat> so this morning when I got to school, I actually noticed there was a spider on the top of my computer. I'd never seen that before. It was actually pretty big. Um, I showed it to Mr. Kutcher, who was in here later, uh, but he told me it's just a bug. Because it's, like, it's on a computer. So, like, it's a bug, not a spider. <laughs> Uh, so, you guys like scary stories? Yeah. Okay. I do, too. And, um, I remember when I was a kid, there was one story about this haunted refrigerator. You guys would like it. It was very chilling. <laughs> Welcome, Max. You missed the good part of class. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, as mentioned yesterday, we're going to talk a little bit about free fall today. Before we get to that, if you look at the question, it says, use Newton's laws to explain why it is that heavy objects don't fall faster than light ones. So, who can remind me how we answered that question yesterday? Yes? No? What was the equation that we used? F equals ma, exactly. So it's all because of Newton's second law. Because if we're looking at acceleration of an object, acceleration is just equal to its force divided by its mass. So if you have a heavier object, which has a bigger mass, it's going to have a bigger force of gravity, which means this ratio is just going to stay the same. If you decrease both those numbers, the ratio is also going to be the same, because they're both going down, not just one. So your acceleration for all objects, as long as you're on Earth, is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared down. Now, when we used acceleration in the force chapter, we used it as a positive number. And the reason we did that was because even though that acceleration is negative, and it's negative because we're speeding up, which is positive, but we're going down, which is negative, so a positive and a negative make a negative, the reason we kept that positive in the force chapter is because usually our force equation would look something like this. And so we have to keep acceleration positive in this case because the negative is already taken into account when we notice that gravity's going down. So that's why we have the acceleration, or g, in these equations equal to a positive number. But now that we're not dealing with force equations anymore, I expected some cheering there. Woohoo! Yeah, there we go. Now that you're not deal dealing with force equations anymore, we have to acknowledge that the acceleration, or the, the g value, when you're in free fall on Earth, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's a habit that you're going to have to get into. Uh, when you're in free fall, your acceleration will always be equal to this number, and it's negative. A couple other things we need to point out. So basically, this chapter is about using the equations that are on your formula sheet. So if you have your formula sheet on you, go ahead and get that out right now. So on your formula sheet, this chapter is a motion chapter, projectile motion. So we're going to be looking at the motion box here. So this is the box that we're going to be dealing with on a regular basis in this section. And if you look on the bottom, all those graphical relationships, that's mainly what we used in the velocity and acceleration chapter, where we're dealing with all those position, velocity, and acceleration time graphs. Now we're going to be dealing with the eight equations that are above those. And I kind of like to refer to these as your physics toolbox. You've got these eight equations, and there's different scenarios where some of them are going to work, 
and different scenarios where other ones are going to work. So mostly what you're doing in this chapter is you're trying to apply the right tool to the right problem. And if it doesn't work, if it gets you nowhere, you just try a different equation, a different tool. And eventually you'll find the right one. I'll, I'll give you some hints on which are the ones that you're going to be using most often, especially today for the homework assignment. And if you look on that formula sheet, if you see that y equation, y equals y original plus v original t plus 1 half at squared, that is a big one that we use for free fall. Another big one that we use for free fall, like on the homework, is this one right here. V equals V original plus AT. That's on the, on the right side. And just below that one, V squared equals V original squared plus 2A change in Y. That's the other big one that we're going to be using relatively often, especially on this homework sheet. So you want to take a special note of those three. Uh, you'll be using those more often than the others. But those eight equations are the eight equations you'll be using regularly uh, in this chapter. So, a couple things about this chapter and how to apply some of those equations. We're just going to take a small amount of notes today. Uh, let's just say, let's start with this. One of the biggest important things about situations where you've got an object that is being dropped or let go is you have to know where your zero point is. And from what I've found doing these problems over and over and over again, let's see, I'm teaching here for 10 years, usually three physics classes a year. So this is about the 30th time I've been through this. Um, what I've found is that the best way to define your zero point with an object that's falling is like this. If you know where the object hits the ground, if the problem says the object is released and it has an impact spot somewhere on the ground, then you should set that impact location equal to zero. The ground would be zero in that case. And then whatever height you release it from would be whatever that height value is, 10 meters, 50 meters, whatever. Now, if you don't know the impact spot, if something says, you know, the object is released, how far down is it after five seconds? You know, under those conditions, you don't have an impact location that it's hitting. For those conditions, it's best to set your release height equal to zero. So then I would set this height equal to zero. And then after five seconds, if it has fallen 50 meters, I would say its final height would be negative 50 meters because it's gone down by 50. So just to make sure you have this in your head, I'm going to put this on the board and hopefully that clears up any issues. And you should probably draw this in your notes too. You can label them uh, free fall. So go ahead, get that drawn in. No, that is, <laughs> he's dropping a rock. Were you envisioning this being a head? Oh dear. Well, that came from you guys, not me. But uh, if you want to roll with that, we can. Okay. Well, you made it a person. I asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So yeah, there we go. Oh, that took a dark turn. Uh, so, the stick man is on the top, and he's dropping... This is going to be on video forever. <laughs> he's dropping the head of this individual from 50 meters up. So here's what we need to try and identify. First, I will tell you that he releases the head from rest. So the original velocity is zero. So that's kind of like a given. From what I said earlier, what would we set the original height equal to under these conditions? Because now we have an impact spot. We know where it hits the ground. 50, exactly. Your original height, when you know the impact location, is going to be whatever that distance is above the ground. What's the final height going to be? Very good. What is the change in height going to be? Negative 50, because we're going down 50 meters. And what's the acceleration going to be? Negative 9.8. Very good. And so you would use these numbers to try and figure something out. Uh, maybe it would ask, you know, how long does it take for the object to hit the ground? And that's something you can solve for using one of those equations that I pointed out earlier. One of the equations from your physics toolbox here. These eight equations are where you live and die in this chapter. Okay, so let's change this up just a little bit. Okay, let's say this person throws an object uh, that is not a decapitated head down at 10 meters per second, and we'll just say that eventually, after a while, it is right here. So it's going down, eventually it reaches this location, and we'll say that this location is 30 meters below where it was dropped from. So there's our object. It's 30 meters below where this guy let go. So under these conditions now, what would my original velocity be? He throws it down at 10 meters per second. What would I put down for original velocity? Close. One tiny little difference. It's throwing down. Negative 10, yeah. So now, velocities are always going to be dependent on the direction. If your velocity is down, then it's going to be negative. If it's up, it'll be positive. So original velocity here is going to be negative 10 meters per second. What is my original height going to be under these conditions? Zero, exactly. Because, in general, it's just best, if you don't know the impact location, to set the release height equal to zero. What's the final height going to be here? Thirty, something thirty. Negative thirty, because we've gone down by thirty meters. And what is our change in height going to be? Negative 30, yep. Because we've gone down by 30 meters. And the acceleration? Yep. Very good. So that's the idea. Again, if you don't know where the object hits the ground, set the release height equal to zero. If you do know that there's an impact location down here, then set the original height equal to whatever that distance is, like we did in the first example. Does that make some sense? Cool. All right.
the last thing that I'm going to mention here has to do with um, squaring and square rooting. Uh, because one of the equations that you use, this v squared equation right here, uh, because it's a square, if you want to get the actual velocity, you're going to eventually have to take the square root. So just a couple things I want to point out if you get to that, that point there. Let's just say that um, my final velocity ends up being equal to negative 3 meters per second. If I square this, What's that number going to be? Nine. Positive nine. Now let's say I get to the point where I have maybe I have a velocity equal to nine. What if I take the square root of that velocity? What do I get? What's it? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Three. Three? Three is one of the answers. Three, negative three. Yeah, exactly. So this number, when you take the square root, can be positive or negative. And the way you figure out if it's positive or negative is you just have to ask yourself, is it going up or is it going down? So if it is going up, it's going to be a positive number. If it's down, it's going to be negative. It doesn't matter what sign you get when you take the square root because uh, you can choose if that's going to be positive or negative because that's just how square roots work. Uh, but yeah, if you do square it, it will always be positive. Questions on this? All righty. Uh, just kind of, again, I want to emphasize uh, the three equations that you're going to use most often on this homework set will be this guy. this guy and this one. So these two equations you're going to use if you have some information about time or you're looking for time. This guy often gets forgotten about. Don't forget about this equation. It's important because if you are not given any information about time, you can still use it to solve for velocity or height, depending on what it does give you. Uh, so yeah, and the, the last thing I'll mention is when you're doing these equations and everything, the easiest way to begin every problem is just to write down everything you know. So if I know my starting height is 50 meters, I would start by writing down original height equals 50 meters. If it tells me that it was uh, dropped for 10 seconds, I would say my time is 10 seconds. And then if it tells me the original velocity is negative 20, I would say original velocity is negative 20. And then if it says, <clears throat> what is your final velocity? I would go like this. That way you have all your information here. You've got what you need to solve for, and that can help you pick the correct equation. OK. That piece of homework is going to be due on Monday. You've got some time to get started on that. Go right ahead. If you want to work in groups, feel free. Let me know if you have questions.